What's going on, Naval X community? Mohawk Matt here today, and today I've actually got Admiral Jamie Fogo. Sir, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, Mohawk Matt, and uh, delighted to be able to talk to you today. Most definitely, sir. Why don't you start out, Jamie, and tell us who Admiral Fogo is, what your role is. I know you've got quite a few hats right now. Yeah, it's a it's a real delight to uh, to broadcast live from Naples, Italy, where I am uh, the commander of Naval Forces Europe, and along with that responsibility uh, goes being the commander of Naval Forces Africa. So I'm here uh, in collaboration, close collaboration with uh, Vice Admiral Lisa France Franchetti, who is uh, the commander of Sixth Fleet. The job I had uh, a few years ago, and uh, we have two separate headquarters, so. Uh, the U.S. side for Europe and Africa is in a place called Capitacino. On a good day, it's 20 minutes from here. Uh, on a bad day, it could be 45 minutes. I'm actually broadcasting to you live from the NATO headquarters, where I am the commander of Joint Forces Command uh, Naples. It's the uh, Allied Command for NATO here in Naples, and we have uh, all uh, 30 members uh represented either in person or they come through the door uh every one of the flags of all the nations is down the lobby and we just added the 30th member of north macedonia last week so uh three commands three hats two headquarters and eight different bases or locations so uh, road of spain uh naples italy gaeta where our command ship uss mount whitney is located Siganella naval air station uh, Suda Bay Crete, which is like an aircraft, fixed aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean, absolutely wonderful facility. And most recently, uh, when I was Sixth Fleet Commander, I was very involved in the development and the construction of our missile defense capability in Debicelu, Romania, which is south of Bucharest, about two and a half hours. And we're building another one in Bratislava, Poland. So uh, pretty extensive uh, theater of operations that goes all the way from the North Pole uh, in the Arctic, uh, down to the Cape of Good Hope uh, in South Africa, where we just had a first ever port visit USS Kearney. Hadn't had a gray hulled US flag warship in there in 11 years, too long. And then from the mid-Atlantic, from about 45 west, all the way to the shores of Crimea. But in my uh, NATO hat, I also have uh, oversight as the operational commander for the NATO mission in Iraq. And so uh, that mission, has fluctuated from about 500 and uh, now down to less than that as we have uh, downsized to move people around as a result of the coronavirus. Over. Wow, thank you, Jamie. That's a very extensive um, bre breadth you have. You have a lot you're kind of paying attention to. Why is it Why is it important that we're there as a, as a country, as NATO, in, where you are in Italy? Yeah, well, it could be more important than now in the midst of uh, this current crisis. But, you know, we are here uh, because the NATO alliance uh, was something that came around in uh, 1949, April of 1949. Uh, we're just surpassing our 71st birthday. The Treaty of Washington of Washington, D.C. created that alliance to prevent the type of thing that happened in Europe in uh, World War II. Uh, so we unfortunately did not fix the problems. From World War I, we ended up in another global conflict. Millions of people died. NATO was created to deter and defend in this Euro-Atlantic Euro theater. Along with that comes a, a presence of uh, not only U.S. forces, but uh, U.S. naval forces. And so we are here with our four destroyers in Rota, Spain, our command ship uh, in Gaeta, Italy. And we participate in exercises that are bilateral, you know, with some of our traditional allies and partners like uh, the British, or multilateral with uh, groups of uh, partners, uh, French, British, uh, Norwegian, for example, in the North Atlantic, or we can do an alliance operation uh, like we participated in in uh, October of 2018, Exercise Trident Juncture, one of the biggest ever since the end of the Cold War, 50,000 troops, uh, you know, 70 ships some large deck the iwo strike group uh the harry s truman strike group participated harry s truman is back here now as a matter of fact coincidentally in the theater and operating with us 
And so in the conduct of all of these exercises and engagements, we're doing a lot of good things. We're building relationships, we're building partnerships, and we are contributing to deterrence, and we are projecting power, therefore contributing to defense. And in, uh, in the midst of the corona crisis, trying to help one another out. So the U.S. is doing some things to assist Italy. You probably saw the president's announcement of $100 million in aid uh, about uh, a week ago. And uh, NATO is doing whatever it can to support not just uh, the Italians, but others in the alliance as well. And that's an effort that's being led from Brussels, Belgium, which is the big NATO headquarters that provides uh, policy and direction uh, from the Secretary General and his staff. What, what, are, what is your guys' focus right now? You talked about the kind of the global pandemic that we're in uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, what, what are you guys focusing on to help both yourselves and those around you? Yeah, so uh, uh, let me just talk first about uh, great power competition, which uh, in the midst of the coronavirus has not gone away. Uh, so there are threats out there. And we compete with other nations uh, like the Russians who don't necessarily uh, see eye to eye with us. Uh, we compete with China. Uh, on both the African and European continent and certainly uh, throughout the world. And uh, we don't always agree. And uh, we also deter against uh, forces of violent extremists uh, with whom you can't really negotiate. There's, there's no answer other than use of force and projection of power. So, you know, the coronavirus could distract you from all of that. Uh, it can't. I mean, defense and deterrence still have to happen. So as Admiral Franchetti likes to say, and she's got a great hashtag, hashtag open for business. So some of the things that we have done is we have complied with all of the laws here in Italy and the decrees to keep our force healthy and safe. Uh, we've taken that very, very seriously. I mean, we started this a little earlier uh, than the United States because the virus hit Italy hard about six to uh, seven weeks ago. Our first town hall on the effects of the virus was on February 19th. And since then we've done uh, four or five, uh, mostly virtual like I'm doing with you now. And, and by the way, thank goodness for virtual connectivity and uh, our J6s and our N6s to keep our satellites going and our, our uh, connectedness a part of our daily life now. Uh, so it's important for us to keep the force healthy. And uh, I think we're doing that because just this past uh, week, we had three of our four destroyers out at sea. Uh, and those crews are healthy. And uh, just to show people that we were still in business, we had a couple of our P-8s, Poseidon aircraft uh, from Sigonella, do a flyover. And uh, it was a, a very loud uh, message uh, to anybody that would challenge us uh, that we're still here and uh, we're still in the business of deterrence. Uh, in addition, just a few days ago, the USS Harry S. Truman Strike Group uh, entered the Mediterranean from the Suez Canal from their time in the Arabian Gulf, uh, conducting uh, great missions over there in uh, defense and deterrence against malign influence of the United States and her allies in the Gulf. She's here with us now. Uh, she is steaming in the Mediterranean. And she is also sending a powerful message to anybody that would try to challenge us uh, and see this as any kind of a period of weakness of the alliance or of individual forces over here. So that's really important. You know, we've got to be able to power through this, take care of our people and get through this and still conduct the business of our national defense strategy.